Hi everyone, this is Sadwin Arevan Mubaz and today we would be reviewing OnePlus X. This is the third phone from OnePlus and if you look at the previous phones it has launched, it launched OnePlus One in 2014, that went on to be the flagship killer of the year. Then it launched OnePlus Two in 2015, which though didn't receive mixed reviews from users and the critics, it still is one of the best mid-rangers in the market today. Both these phones are not expensive at all, however, OnePlus has now released this device for under 17,000. And this one is very different from any other OnePlus smartphone. Let's see how this one changes the equation. The problem with most mid-rangers is that they compromise on the designing. May it be Asus Zenfone 2 or Moto X Play, they all have uninspiring designs. However, OnePlus X is different than them all. It's actually very different from OnePlus's own two smartphones which use sandstone backs. Instead, it boasts a design that can put even certain flagships to shame. It's carved out of premium materials like glass and metal. And apart from that, the chamfered edges on the sides make it more premium. However, this glass back, which they call Onyx back, is slippery. And OnePlus does realize this and hence the phone ships with a silicon back cover. The biggest asset of this design is the sheer comfort it brings to the table. Now I use Galaxy Note 5 and I face a lot of problems in trivial tasks like typing a message with one hand while in bed or taking a selfie with one hand and it's after you use this phone you realize how comfortable small screen phones are. For me overall it's a 6 on 5 for designing. It's both classy and comfy. A part of the reason for this size is the 5 inch screen which is now rare in the era of phablets. Not just any display, it's a full HD Super AMOLED display which is rich and vibrant and the viewing angles are awesome. Blacks are blacker, whites are whiter, better and brighter than even the OnePlus 2. Now let's talk about the internals for a while. It does resemble OnePlus One in terms of uh, specifications when you look at the Snapdragon 801 chip or 3GB of RAM which is not inadequate as most games run with these, even the high-end ones and we didn't have any performance issues as well. However, the phone does overheat because of the new body, especially this uh, metal rim around. But here's my big point. Snapdragon 820 would be out next year. 810 has been powering devices this year. Before that, there was 808. Before that, there was 805. And then there was 801. And 801 chipset on OnePlus X is slightly underclocked than the one on OnePlus One. So from a futuristic point of view, some people might find it a turn off. But coming to the software, I love the Oxygen OS and you would like it too. Though it's relatively newer than CM, it inherits all the features we love in CM. Like the shelf on the top, which hosts all your recent apps and frequent contacts. It does have stock-like user interface and is very smooth. And the best part, it's all customizable. If you like me and you like your phone to stand out, do enable this dark mode. It's pretty cool. You can also tweak the accent color and the LED notification lights. These customizations are the heart of this software. But that's not it. You can also change how the physical buttons respond. Add shortcuts on single, double or long press and since the keys aren't backlit, you may even want to get a virtual navigation bar on the screen. So it's full marks on software on this one and also OnePlus is known for updating their devices quickly so do expect Marshmallow soon. Coming to cameras, though sufficient, they're not as efficient as their peers. Uh, first up, the user interface. It's pretty basic and is devoid of any cool filters or features. It does have slow-mo, time-lapse and panorama, but that's pretty much it. Also, it reminds me of Google Camera, which for me is the worst finder. Just like Google Camera, it covers one quarter of the screen, which is very disturbing when snapping pictures. Quality is not that great too. It's fine, but when compared to the likes of Xiaomi Mi 4 or even Asus Zenfone 2. Talking about the battery life, it's a little erratic. While the 2525mAh battery does last me throughout the day with ease, the drain on idle is sometimes a little too much. However, in our battery test where we put the phone on video loop and let it drain, it lasted for 12 hours, which is 4 hours more than our average 8 hour. Uh, apart from that, one reason that uh, the battery is good in daily usage may be because of the use of AMOLED, which is more power efficient than typical LCD displays. However, charging on this one isn't very fast. It took me a little less than two and a half hours to charge this one. And in an age where fast charging is becoming ubiquitous, you kind of miss it on even on a mid-ranger. Coming to calling, it was very good on this one. However, the phone feels slippery in hand and that's where the case comes to the rescue. 
But now let's talk about connectivity. It's got 4G, it's got dual hybrid SIMs, USB OTG, but the phone uses a rather outdated version of Wi-Fi that doesn't even support 5 GHz frequency. But thankfully, it comes with a standard USB cable, which means your old charger or any of your friend's chargers will still work on this device. Also, the LR slider from OnePlus 2 is still available where you can set the notifications from all, priority and none with just one button. Before the verdict, let's just take a moment and talk about the trade-offs we have here. To keep the cost low and to keep that great design, OnePlus has made a lot of compromises under the hood. Apart from the outdated Wi-Fi, the phone does not have NFC, does not support fast charging, it uses Gorilla Glass 3 instead of Gorilla Glass 4, it uses an outdated processor and that too, an underclocked version of it. It uh, has no fingerprint scanning and, even, and doesn't even support optical image stabilization. Now I know it's a mid-range phone, however, its peers, Moto X Play and Asus Zenfone 2 and now Chiku Q Terra offer most of these specs and they're not very expensive than the OnePlus X either. Also, last year's OnePlus One is still an option. But here's where this one wins. Number one, screen size. If you want a powerful 5-incher, you have Xiaomi Mi 4i at 13,000 and Honor 7 at 22,000. Both of which boast specs at par with the OnePlus X. But now, you have a third option in between. The OnePlus X. Second, beautiful design. The, des the design is very premium on this one and for me, it's one of the best designs under 20,000. Thirdly, Oxygen OS. Unlike most other Chinese manufacturers who like to bloat their UIs to death, OnePlus keeps it simple and that's what I believe is the sheen of this device. You get a stock experience, a Nexus-like experience if I may say so, at 17,000. Now that's a good deal. Now for the big question, should you buy this one? The answer is a big yes. The only bummer here is the average camera quality, but barring that, if you want a 5-inch phone that is sturdy, stylish and sexy, go for this one and you won't regret. It's a 4 on 5 for OnePlus X from us. The phone might not be good for everyone, but it's a great device for most people. And those of you who look for alternatives, Lenovo Vibe S1 with similarly good design and much better cameras might be a worthy contender. That's all folks, hit that like button and do tell us what you think of the OnePlus X. Press share and do subscribe to 91 Mobiles, India's largest gadget research website. That's it. See you next time. Ciao.